So this is a case of mild Crohn's disease with progression. I think this is really helpful for people who are managing patients in a not severe environment because this is the kind of usual Crohn's disease case that people come up with when they're not like the sickest people in the world who are coming <laughs> to our clinics. So 23-year-old gentleman, mild ilocolonic Crohn's, no meds, now with disease progression. So June 2023, he's totally well, and then he starts isotretinoin for acne. Initially, he's fine, but then he uptitrates the dose, and he gets abdominal pain that resolves with bowel movements. Stops the isotretinoin, his pain resolves, restarts, and it occurs. He also has a few days of bright red blood per rectum when he wipes, and this prompts him to undergo a colonoscopy. So the colonoscopy shows mild erythema and punctate aphthe in the sigmoid. Remainder of the colon is normal, as is the TI, but the biopsies from the sigmoid and TI show non-caseating granulomas. The FC, the calprotectin at this time is 495, and the uh, MRE shows no transmural inflammation. So you can see, it's kind of hard to see because it's so subtle. There's a few little, little aphthi, and then it sort of looks like a little rough surface. And when he, and the, um, when at this yes, that, that doesn't look like it's going to produce a Calpro 445. Did you get a good look? This is one of the rare patients I might do a capsule, no matter how good the MR is. That the sigmoid is looking good. I didn't see how bad the sigmoid is. No, I think the sigmoid. Yeah, I think the sigmoid can generate. I'll give you the I can't see it from here. You can, it's sort of subtle because it was so, it wasn't That's so significant. The sigmoid? This is the sigmoid, and you can see there's oh, okay. sort of like this I surface was level kind of irritation. Here. Okay. Yeah, I'll so <clears throat> this is all sigmoid. The TI was endoscopically normal, but okay, with, so. had granulomas on path. So he, sorry, that was out of order. So he comes in for a follow-up after the colonoscopy. He says after he consumes dairy, he has explosive bloody diarrhea, but he has absolutely no symptoms if he doesn't eat dairy. Otherwise, he's feeling totally well. Um, and because of the FC elevation and because of this intermittent set of symptomatology related to the dairy. He started on a budesonide taper, and a repeat calprotectin is 173. He comes back for follow-up. He says his symptoms are- What budesonide, are entocord, or, or Eucerus? Uh, Eucerus. Okay. Eucerus because of the sigmoid inflammation. March, he's seen in follow-up. He says his symptoms haven't changed. He continues to have bloody diarrhea only with dairy. Otherwise, he has one to two bowel movements a day without urgency or nocturnal symptoms. He sees allergy because there was concern for a possible true dairy allergy because otherwise he's completely well outside of eating dairy. He's told the symptoms may be consistent with adult onset F pies, and he's told to avoid dairy completely. In August, he has a repeat Calpro that's 310. He says he hasn't been eating dairy, but he's not sure if he took, he had anything that like contained it by mistake. He's feeling well, as long as he avoids dairy completely in September. He has blood with wiping, sometimes even when he doesn't strain, having a bowel movement soon after mm. eating, which is new for him, some urgency but no concerns about incontinence. His stools are formed, two to three a day. He has an intestinal ultrasound with patchy hyperemia in the distal five centimeters of terminal ileum and a little bit of wall thickening in this area. Um, so you can see on the left, the hyperemia, as well as this increase in bowel wall thickness. So the plan is to repeat a colonoscopy. So the colonoscopy now shows Mild inflammation in the TI and rectum, characterized by aphthous ulcerations, edema and erythema, and mild erythema and texture change without any ulceration or aphthi in the left colon and transverse. So different from before, a progression compared to prior, still overall mild. The bottom, this isn't a perfect picture, but there were definitely several focal aphthous ulcers. So JD, do you want to comment on the pathology? Sure. Just, this, is, this slide just is to show what an aphthous lesion or aphthous ulcer looks like histologically. What it is is when you have a lymphoid aggregate and the ulcer is above that lymphoid aggregate. And um, you can see this in Crohn's, but it's not specific. You can also see it, uh, this histology in infections and in Bichette's disease, other things as well. And then um, for this patient in the transverse colon and rectum, there were numerous non-necrotizing epithelioid cell granuloma in the mucosa. Epithelioid means that these uh, macrophages have very pink cytoplasm, and they're very closely packed together. Uh, when you see this, Dr. Harpaz would say this is Crohn's disease until proven otherwise, especially at Mount Sinai. Um, <laughs> Um, and then this is just to show, as opposed to seeing uh, necrotizing granuloma, so on the, on the left is our patient with these tightly packed uh, macrophages with no necrosis, and on the right is a necrotizing granuloma that has central necrosis, where you'd be thinking more like a TB, fungus, or parasite. Thank you so much. All right, so patient's largely asymptomatic except when he eats dairy, although now he is newly having some postprandial urgency of form stool and some blood with wiping. Given the progression of the disease on both colonoscopy and now that the intestinal ultrasound shows transmural involvement in the TI, are you still watching him carefully or would you start a therapy? I think, I think at, at this stage we will all agree that we will start something. 
the uh, question actually is, should, should, we, should we start something at the beginning, you know, in this, uh, in this patient? Now, you know, he has progressive disease, he has ileal disease and rectal disease, which is something that, of course, is a concern. It will be pure ileality, this is another question. The question is that why didn't we start something one year ago? Because it was one year ago, right? Um, so there is big interest in my patient. So the definition of my is not well ca ca characterized. No, we are working on that. But we know that there are patients who have mild Crohn's disease, defined as no need for any uh, advanced therapy within one year, no complication, and so on. And among those patients, when you follow them in the long term, only 20% will uh, uh, remain mild. But there is still a subgroup of patients who will remain mild their whole life, and we will need nothing. The, the problem is that we, we don't have good predictor uh, of that. But here it's a different question. This guy has progress, he has urgency, very likely because of his rectal disease, he needs a therapy that we could discuss uh, about yeah. which one. The question is that, should, should, should we start something earlier? Right, I think uh, that's yeah. a great question. Right. I, and I, I'd also, one other factor that I always put in is, the rectal involvement to me is a very ominous development because that can be very difficult to manage in these patients and it has real implications for him later on. Right. And, you know, again, the, the sigmoid involvement, maybe not so much, but the rectal bleeding I want to go back to just for a moment, that usually is a sign of anitis, which can definitely be, a, a, again, another problematic uh, and maybe ominous uh, presentation. You know, you keep saying he's not having much in the way of symptoms, but he's bleeding and he should not be bleeding and that makes me worry about anitis. I think looking back a year ago, if you think about the sort of algorithm that Dr. Plater had in her in her review of mild Crohn's disease, some of the features that we think about as being signs that we really need to treat are things like transmural inflammation, which he did not have. Symptomatically, he was pretty minimal, and his disease endoscopically was quite limited. The only thing we really would have been treating was a calprotectin that made us uncomfortable. Yes, we could have done a capsule at the time. It wasn't done. Um, but now, I think because of the progression of disease, it's not really a question. The concern is just in the beginning, are you starting this guy on a biologic? Because you're talking about Crohn's right. disease. It's not really typical so, that we would start a misalamine agent. So, so JFC, just, there's a difference between mild Crohn's disease and incidental Crohn's yes. disease, right? So we're not distinguishing. We're, I just want to, the distinction between the two, because there's plenty of patients that I scope who are related to my Crohn's disease patients who have incidental Crohn's disease, asymptomatic, and they have a few apathy in the terminal ileum, right, yeah. and I say, oh, well, you, you, you know, so. Um, I think I'm, I'm not being uh, uh, cynical or anti-Semitic. Are these the Hasidim? Not all of them. I mean, no, but uh, is it TI disease? Of course. I, I, I think that might be a different. I'm not sure. Think. I, I don't know, but it's it's so distinctly ileitis and probably so distinctly one gene and probably multiple relatives who behave differently. I just wonder. I, I, That's I, why I can't yes. tell you for a fact, but there's a, one other question is, in this patient with colonic, initially colonic which, which is a different Crohn's, group. would you have considered mesalamine without any ileal inflammation on the initial colonoscopy to treat his superficial Crohn's disease of the sigmoid? Personally, no, because we have no data showing that. that. I don't, I don't, no, they, no, but, no, but I'm working on kind of evidence base because in, in, in this patient, I, I would like to target... Uh, Transmural. Uh, yes, at least uh, endoscopic healing, you know, and I know that with uh, mesalamine, very likely I will not um, be able to obtain that, so I don't, I don't understand why I should treat him with um, mesalamine. Not one year later, initially. Is even uh, initially. So, okay. so to me, it would be either nothing or start a biologic. Because in um, something else that actually Frank is here uh, representing Jeted, <laughs> Frank Carbonel. Oh. And uh, okay. the point is that in, in Europe, they are, they are still using a lot of uh, azathioprine, uh, 
monotherapy. So uh, uh, I don't know, Frank, what do you think? Are you still using azathioprine, monotherapy? Um, yeah. Less and less, sometimes for UC. But, Very but this case, for, for instance, no. no. Okay. no. Yeah. And if, I, if I may, yeah, yeah, of course. I, I wouldn't have treated him with uh, her, yeah. with yeah. Uh, salicylates one year ago, because she has granulomas from the, from the start, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I, I don't believe that salicylates would, would work in this mm -hmm. I think that is wrong. Dr. Rubin? Uh, did that acne medicine have anything to do with this? <laughs> so no, it's, a no, great, no. Don't stop. it's an important don't stop. question, and there are some there. there are some studies on this actually. Well, looking at the which it all depends on which Mount Sinai expert witness you ask. You should add, yeah. I mean, you know, this was a, a long controversy, Peter, uh, as you know, huh? With isotretinoin, specifically looking at potential risk and, uh, of IBD eventually it was dismissed. Even though it's true that we see some cases like that, yeah. but. Uh, I would guess he was somebody who was predisposed and maybe the exposure set a switch off or something like that, but I don't think it was causal. No. Right. Would you agree? Not causal. No, no, okay. nothing to do with it. So either way, he's not on that medicine anymore. Okay. So starting in the beginning, right. it sounds like there's mixed about whether we would have started medication. Does everybody think medication should have been started at the beginning or at yes. the beginning probably would have watched? Yeah. Yes? Yes, definitely. What because of the with? rectal, of the, I, I agree with you. There was no rectal inflammation. But there was colonic involvement, right? Yes. And the bleeding makes me worry about anitis. And there were granulomas in the first biopsy, yes. you know? Yes. Yeah, I mean, like, but but there was no transmural inflammation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, no. Yes. And if you had, you would have done Listen, everyone sounds smart when they say we started because he progressed. If you're sitting there before he progressed, then... And I'm not arguing, but it's not, I don't think it's, it's a decisive answer. I gotta tell you, I have patients like this, so I don't start therapy on, and they're, and we follow them, and, and some of them yeah, are. Yeah, Right, so, I wouldn't. Yeah, she was just asking what her own practice would be, and, yeah. I, and I, I'm just right. saying, okay, if I could put myself you a year ago, something. not to say, I told you so, or yeah. shoulda, coulda. Yeah. No, that's not it, it's just like, that's right. my own sense. Would your that would have been my recommendation. They didn't, they wouldn't have to take my the advice. Would you have chosen something like vetalizumab or ustekinumab? Yeah, I mean, we have so many mild options at this point that have like great safety profiles. I mean, we use these drugs to treat rashes, for heaven's sake. I mean, you know, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So, you know what I mean? It's like, it's And you know, it's on crazy. the top of it's that, true. you know, you, you can true. consider this kind of drug because even Vedo, you know, there is this Love Crohn disease study just reported by Gerdon showing amazing results when you are using Vedo very early. Early. So yeah. I, that I agree with. Now that you're yeah, talking yeah. about starting something, because now we're all saying he progressed, he's proven himself. Are you thinking of Veto? Are you thinking of a 23? A year ago, I would think Veto, and I and I'm not some. And John Fred knows my opinion on Veto for the disease. I've always been saying it, it barely reached its uh, endpoints. But I I do I would have considered Veto. I would have offered it to him. But no. now with you know with all the IL 23s and the, and the upgrades, it. it there, there are many, many great choices. And again, you know, it's funny you bring up azathioprine. Back in the day, if he, like the way he is now, the way he is currently, you know, we'd have a conversation about six MP or azathioprine back in the nineties, and that would be but a hard no conversation. More. No I, more. I would start with Vito or an IL twenty three. I think Vito would would be effective also. Right. I don't think it's going to be ineffective at this point. Yeah. Yeah. But I, but an IL twenty three. Yeah. yeah. I think for this young person. I would say, in America, I would just make the point, he's a young kid, it's not always that simple. They change jobs, they change insurances, it's, it's great on paper, but in reality, it, it can, gets to be a pain in the you-know-what, because yeah. they get denied, it's $100,000 a year. You mean for uh, uh, IL-23, Jim? For, for all these agents, it becomes a problem. Patients do well. Their insurance changes, they start missing doses, and it, it yes, he needs something, but it, I, it's not so simple as giving them right. a medicine for a rash because of the American healthcare right. system right. makes it right. uh, this is a good point, Jim. I, difficult. I, it, it's incredibly frustrating. I agree. I agree. Quick question, what do you make of the fact that he has diarrhea with blood, eating dairy only, and otherwise is completely well? Do you There's see that small as a bowel disease that has not been picked up yet. 
Okay. And it's probably as superficial as what we found in the colon well, initially. You, you have a lot of patients with Crohn's disease who have this kind of in, intolerance to dairy, right? Right, yeah. but the bloody diarrhea in the setting of just dairy. I think I think it's a hundred percent real. I don't know how to explain it. I think we know we our our, our knowledge of food reactions and allergies is very yeah. limited. Yeah. So we think it's related to the Crohn's disease. I think it's Crohn's and it's anitis. Small bowel disease. And it doesn't it's matter accurate. actually, yeah. right? Yeah. But you're, well, we'll you're see now that the <laughs> it's a Crohn's and a guy who t shouldn't take dairy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you all so much.